Wait, what's a sitch? Wait. Oh, dang it, he's not at his he's not at his he's not at his desk. Well looks like I'm gonna need to find him. Find Wade, you must review the Kim Possible film. Challenge accepted! Are you Today's Saints Kenzie Retro here and welcome to another edition of Kenzie Retro's Reviews. This week we talk about the we talk about the Kim Possible film that got released um, earlier this year on the Disney Channel. And oh my goodness me, people were skeptical about this one, including myself. But oh my goodness me, it is well Let's find out. So. So as we know, so, uh, I'm going to keep this spoiler free because people might still want to watch it. So. Here we go. This. Uh, so we're going to start off with. The plot, right? So, it's based on the TV show in the early 2000s, which is one of my favourite shows of all time. And, oh my word, I'm not joking, guys. I had, like, the biggest crush on Kim Possible when I was younger. I mean, can you blame me? Who didn't want to be Kim Possible? Right. And, shock and surprise, it's another... It, it plays... It's basically a 90-minute episode of the show where she takes on Dr. Draken and she go to try and save the world. Man oh man. So I mean like I said it it really felt like a prop it felt like it definitely felt like a TV show it felt like an episode of the TV show and that's what you want from something like this. If you're gonna adapt a TV show into a film, you want it to feel like the TV show. And that's what this does. And, oh my word, it's... Like I said, it's difficult to go into this without going into spoiler territory. But, this is just incredible. Characters. Now I'm gonna go through the cast of the main characters. So you got so you got Sadie Stanley as Kim Possible, and Sean Gambon as Ron Stoppable, uh, Kiara Riley Wilson as Athena, who's an android that was built by Doctor Dragon, who is played by Todd Stashwick. Now the name, that name is very familiar. Where have I heard that name before? Filmography, let's have a look. Law and order, yada yada yada. He's... Crossing the old names. Oh, it's been mainly TV shows he's been on. Oh, he played uh, the Cowardly Lion in Tom and Jerry and the Wizard of Oz. He was in a Phineas and Ferb film. He was in Gotham. Oh, he's going to be in Suicide. Oh, he's going to be in. Uh, he's going to be in Suicide Squad too. No idea who he's going to play. Uh, he was in. Uh, I guess he was in Gotham, Grey's Anatomy, Criminal Minds, Team Wolf, Team Wolf and Mockingbird. He's been going for a while. Well, 
first started in 1997. And oh, he was co-writing with Amy Hennig on a Star Wars game before it got cancelled. Uh, you've got Taylor Ortega as Shigo, and oh my word, she is brilliant. Isaac Ryan Brown as Wade, Erica Tham as Bonnie Rockwaller. Oh my word, I cannot stand Bonnie. Uh, Maxwell Simpkins as a young draken. I won't explain why. Alison Hannigan from How I Met Your Mother as Anne Poss as Doctor Anne Possible. Matthew Clark as the dad. And you've got the Fielding brothers Owen and Connor as Tim and Jim. Michael P. Northy as Mr. Barkin, and oh my word, he is just so arrogant! Um, uh, we've got Patrick Sabongui as Dr. Glotman, Cedric Ducharme as Cool Todd, Christy Carlson Romano as the as uh, Poppy Blue, who's a pop star, but she, sh we got, we, ah! Christy Carlson Romano was the voice of, was the original voice of Kim Possible. That is so cool that they managed to get an original voice actor from the TV show into the film. That's brilliant. Nancy Cartwright as Rufus. Nancy Cartwright is brilliant with her voice roles. And Patton Oswalt as Professor Dementor. Now, the cast, they all fit their roles really well. Especially Shigo and Dr. Dragon. I mean, I mean, Shigo feels more dominant than Draken. But so many callbacks to the TV show, including the OG costume that Kim well, wore in the TV show. I mean, the costume's different. She wears a different costume now compared to what she wore in the TV show. But, oh my word, they actually showed the costume and I was like, ah! And it was like, Sean captures Ron perfectly. Erica as Bonnie, she is just, oh, I hate her in the TV show. And I hate her even more here. Wow. I mean, but it works. Everyone fits their role really well. And the new character, Athena, who's an android, I really like Athena. And, I mean, wow, what more can I say? And... Oh, I forgot about Connie Ray as uh, Nana Possible. Hmm. Forgot about her. Anyway, um. Anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, visuals. Um, well, again, like I say, like I say, the visuals captured the spirit of the uh, TV show really well. The costumes are the costumes are on point. The make um, uh, the makeup's really good, but. Some of the visual effects, though, a mm, bit dodgy in places. Some of it's a bit too obvious. Some of it's way too obvious as far as the CG is concerned. Some of the CG is way too obvious. Uh, but, oh my word. Um, but apart from that, like I say, 
it captures the spirit of the show. The visuals capture the spirit. The the visuals capture the essence of the show really well. I would have loved to have seen Kim wear the original costume though. That's one of my only gripes as far as the costumes are concerned. But apart from that, it was the, the visuals were okay. So, and last but by no means least, the soundtrack. Just like the cast perfectly uh, cast as their characters, you've also got the soundtrack which feels like a more epic version of the show. Not to mention the fact they actually kept the original theme. I mean, they managed to, they managed to, they managed to amp up the original theme in the intro to the film and oh my word it was so good. I'm not a fan of the new version of the theme though. I mean, if it were up to me, I would have kept the original backing track of the song, maybe kept the original track full stop, or used maybe Ariana Grande, Demi Lovato, Selena Gomez, Miley Cyrus. Any one of those could have worked. Bella Thorne maybe as well. But in an ideal world, I would have chosen Ariana Grande. I mean, I'm a huge Ariana fan. Can you blame me, guys? Don't at me, guys! Don't at me! But... Apart from that, I'm happy they managed to keep the theme song from the show. And that there's not really, not really much else I can say beyond that. So. And so there we go. So that we go and so yeah. So yeah, there we go. So the the story, a 9 out of 10. The cast, 10 out of 10. Visuals, 7 out of 10 because of the issues that I pointed out. And the soundtrack, 9 out of 10. Overall, a score of 88%. So, yeah. 88% for a TV film. How often can you say that? And... I mean, I mean, you, I mean. Obviously, if you're a fan of the show, I would highly recommend you check this one out when you get the chance because it is absolutely brilliant. Like I say, some of the visuals are a bit off because some of it's way too CG'd. Some of some of it's green screen. It's way too obvious. But overall, a great nostalgia trip, and overall, a great film. Hope you enjoyed what you saw today. If you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be about to since following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter day series notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. I have got my previous video on the left, my reviews playlist on the right. What am I gonna so what am I gonna be reviewing next? Next week, I review Avengers Endgame with a very special guest on my channel. So who's that special guest gonna be? You'll need to tune in to find out. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, and as always, stay faithful.